This podcast is brought to you by Knowledge at Wharton. Welcome to Knowledge at Wharton. I'm Angie Bassini. Do you remember when your sixth grade English teacher told you that it was better to write your essay with active verbs? Well, she was on to something. Wharton marketing professor Jonah Berger is here with us today to talk about his latest study on how verb tense can shape consumer persuasion, which incidentally is the title of his paper. Jonah, welcome. Thanks so much for having me. I wanted to quote a sentence to get us started from your paper, and I think it's a great, a great one. Quote, while almost everything consumers do involves language, researchers are only starting to examine how words shape attitudes and behavior. So I wanted to pull the sentence out because I thought, why did you want to study something as specific as verb tense? <laughs> You know, I don't know if you've had this experience, but we're all writers, right? I mean, we may not write books or novels or plays, but we're writing all the time, right? Uh, you know, every day we're writing emails or writing PowerPoint presentations, Word documents, a variety of types of content. Um, and as an academic, I also write uh, academic papers. And so one thing I wondered a couple of years ago is, well, look, some academic papers are really impactful. Others aren't. Uh, obviously, some of this is the ideas, right? Some ideas are better and others are, are less good. But could something beyond the, the, the quality of the idea, namely how that idea is presented, also shape its impact, right? Uh, the way we write, uh, even something like academic research, shape, shape uh, its impact. And so a couple of years ago, we did a project on this. We looked at thousands of academic articles, the number of citations they received, and looked at whether writing shaped uh, citations. And, and we found that it did. And we found one thing in particular that was a little surprising to me was that tense mattered. Um, and I hadn't even really thought about verb tense before. So maybe I'll talk a little about what tense means for a second. You know, we can talk about things um, in the past tense uh, or the present tense. So we can talk about the same thing. We can say, you know, this book had a great plot or this book has a great plot, right? Had being the past, has being present. Um, if someone um, uh, asks you about, you know, what a, a vacation that you took or something like that, you could say, well, France was really fun or France is really fun. We often get a choice about whether we can use the past or, or the present tense. Um, uh, you know, the, the study found or the study finds, uh, for a, a example. Um, and so we found there that writing in uh, one tense versus the other could have an impact. And so we started wondering, well, maybe would this generalize? Is this just something nuanced about academics and academic research? Or might, you know, in, in our more marketing world, um, might the way we use tense have an impact? Uh, might the way we write online reviews or sales pitches um, or ads might, whether we use the present tense or the past tense, shape how persuaded are people by our message. Uh, when I was reading the paper, I was thinking about different uh, ad slogans and changing them in my head to past tense. And the one that popped into my head was, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, which would not ne work nearly as well if it was what happened in Vegas stayed in Vegas. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a, there's a, the key takeaway here is that a simple shift in verb tense can make your message more effective. Why? How, how does that work in the brain? How is it just that one thing that makes a difference? Yeah. So, so let's talk about past tense for a second. So, so if someone said, um, you know, that book had a great plot, um, you know, Vegas was fun, um, uh, you know, this product won an award, all, all these things, it suggests that this particular person, for example, with the book, that they liked the book when they read it, or they enjoyed Vegas or France or whenever they, what it was when, when they visited. Um, and because experiences are naturally subjective, right, it, it also suggests that it was their experience. Not only was it their experience when they went in the past, but it was their personal experience. When we say the present tense, though, we're, we're doing a little bit more generalizing, right? When we say France is fun, uh, it says, well, not only was it fun when I went that particular time a few years ago, not only did I find it fun, but when I'm willing to say, well, France is fun, it suggests, well, everyone would find it fun whenever they went, right? It suggests it's a more general uh, idea. It's, in some sense, it's, it's an assertion, right? Uh, same thing, you know, when we say um, the book is great, the book is interesting, it suggests not just it was when I read it, but it is and will be uh, in the future. Um, and so when we, when we use the present tense, people go, wow, you're, you're willing to generalize beyond your own personal experience in the past? to generalize to people beyond yourself and to what's more likely to happen moving forward, well, you, you must be more certain, right? You must be more confident. If you're willing to say not just that France was fun, but it is fun, not just this book had great uh, plot, but it has a great plot, when you're going generalizing beyond the, the past, suggest you're more confident or certain about what you're saying. 
And as a result, people are more likely to follow up on your opinion and, and be persuaded. It makes the audience feel included in your message. A little bit. And it, it also makes you just seem more confident, right? If, right. if you're willing to go beyond your experience right. um, and suggest something that others will experience as well, people go, well, it must, it must be really good. You must be so confident about how good it is, how right it is, uh, that, that uh, I'll be more likely to take that action. How did you go about studying this? <laughs> yeah. So we started, uh, as, I, as I often like to do in research, with field data. So in this case, we looked at thousands uh, of online reviews about books. Right? So imagine you go to Amazon.com, think about all the reviews there for right. a, a given book. And so we downloaded over 100,000 different reviews, uh, controlling for all sorts of other different things, which book it was for and whether people liked the book or not and what topics they talked about. We found that, hey, writing that review, the more sentences in that review that use present tense, the more useful people found it. And that was interesting, right? We thought mm -hmm. that would be powerful, but we could say, well, maybe that's just books, right? Books are something you, you know, you um, maybe you consume in a certain way. Um, maybe it's just specific to books. And so we looked at another category. We looked at music. Some of you might say, well, books are only something you read once, whereas music you consume more often. Maybe it wouldn't hold for music. Nope. Same thing for music. So when we looked at over 100,000 music reviews, when reviews use present tense, other people found it more useful and were more persuaded by it. You might say, well, that's nice, but maybe it's just, you know, enjoyable stuff like books and music. Maybe it wouldn't matter in other uh, more sort of technical domains. Well, we looked at electronics, consumer electronics, so headphones, keyboards, other sorts of things. Same effect there as well. Maybe it's just about products, right? Maybe it wouldn't hold in services. We went right. to Yelp uh, and looked at restaurant reviews. Same thing there. And so across all these different domains, across the different categories, writing in the present tense increased impact. And so that was interesting, but we said, well, maybe you can't be sure it's causal. Maybe it's just some sort of correlation. So we right. conducted some experiments. We took exactly the same thing. And for some people we talked about it in the present tense and other people we talked about it in the past tense. And we found that even in that situation, right, tight control, present tense made it more persuasive. Even something like the results of a scientific study, right? So um, this has a certain impact versus had a certain impact. Yeah. People think a drug is going to be more effective in the future. They're more interested in uh, adopting a weight loss plan when you use things like present tense rather than, than past tense. So this has application just sort of across a bunch of different domains, marketing, advertising, just writing in general. Um, it seems to me, um, you know, obviously the, the big message here is use present verbs. Uh, is it that simple? Is that the is that the trick, the secret sauce? Is there something else you're not telling us? When I think about research, I think the best research takes something that's big and important and shows that you can have an impact on it in uh, a meaningful way with something that's not too difficult to do. Uh, and so I don't mean to suggest that we can always talk right. about things in present tense, right? Uh, if someone asks you, did you study for the test? You can't say, I am, you know, if you studied, it's in the past. So you can't change that because that is the studying happened in right. the past. Unless you are currently studying, you can't talk about how you uh, are currently presently studying if, if you're not. That's it. In, in many cases, we have a choice. Right? So I'm an automobile manufacturer, for example, and my car um, uh, was voted uh, you know, car of the year uh, in a certain category. Well, it was voted, but it also is car of the year currently. Right. Right? I have a choice. I can say it was voted car of the year or it is car of the year. I should probably say it is because it's going to be more persuasive. Now, I'm a doctor talking to a patient. right? Uh, rather than saying it had a 90% success rate, saying it has a 90% success rate, <laughs> It's going to make people think it's more efficacious and make them more likely to, to do it. And so we can't use this all the time in all cases. But this, again, is a situation where subtle shifts in language can have a, an important impact on behavior. Thank you so much. Uh, I consider you the word master. So I will, before you go, I do want to mention your fourth book. It's called Magic Words, How to, uh, What to Say to Get Your Way, which is a power I think all of us would like to have. You can download it anywhere that you download books. Jonah, thanks for being here with me today. Thanks so much for having me. If you enjoyed this conversation, you can find more Just Like It on our website, where you can also find all our articles on the latest research in business. For Knowledge at Warden, I'm Angie Bassini. Thanks for joining us. For more insight from Knowledge at Wharton, please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu.